Hello ladies and gentlemen and in today's video I'm going to be taking a picture of that uh, plant, it's an amaryllis, uh, using uh, a macro lens in a completely dark room. How are we going to achieve this? Well, I shall shed some light on that after this. Hello there, so welcome to another video. Now, lockdown has been particularly difficult for a lot of photographers. Many of us haven't been able to get out of the house at all, certainly haven't been able to go on the long trips that uh, we used to. So I've been trying to find a few things that I can do around the home that are interesting uh, and uh, that give me a little bit of a challenge. Today's challenge is possibly something uh, that you might be interested in yourself. I've got this plant behind me, it's massive, it's absolutely huge. It's an amaryllis. And what I'm going to do is take a picture of it using this. This is the uh, 80mm macro lens. Now, previously, in previous videos, I've stuck mostly to the 60mm, partly because um, it's a little bit smaller, it's a little bit easier to use. Uh, this one is a 2.8 lens. We've got optical image, image stabilisation. Uh, it's a fantastic quality. I mean, it really is just spot on. Uh, so I'm hoping that we're going to be able to get several different uh, sorts of photo of the flower. First of all, obviously we want to get the, the, the big flowery bits. Uh, secondly, I want to get some close-ups on some of these these uh, fronds. I don't know if that's what you call it, some of the, the bits in, in, in between. Um, and thirdly, we're doing this in what is essentially a dark room. Uh, this is uh, my room. You might notice the computer behind me. This is the same uh, place that I record all of my vlogs in. This is where I work. This is essentially this little corner of the house is my studio. And over that way, I've got a bed, I've got a settee, I've got a television. Uh, you know, it, it's um, there's a bit of space, but there's not much. And there's no light in here because this part is a converted garage. So we've got one big uh, window at the, at the one end of the room, which gets no light at all because all the, the light comes into that side of the house. So this is a very dark room that even when I'm working on it uh, by myself, I have to have lights on all day, every day, because the light in the room is just not big enough to cope. So when you then translate that to photography, what are we going to do? How are we going to light this so that it actually looks good? And that's what we're going to be exploring today. The first thing I'm going to do is to put this into position. Now, I've got this great big board here. I don't know if you can see it. Let's bring this forward a little bit. Uh, I've got this board here, uh, which has got a grey on it. I really like shooting against grey um, because if you're doing it with flash for a start, it gives you a nice kind of faded background. Uh, it's better than shooting against black because if you've got the, that kind of grey background, it makes it easier to cut things out of. This isn't a 50% grey. You don't need to shoot on a 50% grey, mostly because the, the technology behind um, things like Photoshop is good enough now to be able to cut out from virtually anything. So this just makes it easier to cut things out. Um, and also the great thing about grey is that it doesn't reflect colour back onto your subject. So you could use a green screen to do this or a blue screen to do this. The problem with that would be uh, that every time you shine something at the blue screen, blue gets reflected back and often uh, then ends up on the on the outside of your subject. I had that problem, uh, in fact still do have that problem when I'm doing some of the thumbnails that I do for my videos. Um, I, I was shooting against a green screen and, and it just the spill was just too much to, to uh, for the computer to be able to deal with. So shooting on grey, great idea. Um, and it's it's tall, but it's not necessarily uh, tall enough. Um, it, it can block out the flower completely, but by the time you uh, put uh, distance into the equation as well, uh, it may mean that actually it's not big enough. We'll have to shift things around in order to make it work. Um, the other problem that we're going to have today is lighting. So uh, we've I've got this this flower here. It's a perfectly good flower. It's going to have to be kind of here-ish, maybe a little bit over so that what we actually get is the grey background we don't get everything else behind it. Now the problem with that, partly this is really big, partly these, the flower that you can see at the moment is actually pointing down, so I can't stand up and do this 
um, I'd be shooting down from the top. I'd really be better shooting from below. That's going to cause a problem with this background, with actually getting that background um, in, into the right place. Uh, so I may have to deal with with having a um, a, a, a lower aperture, higher aperture, sorry, an f2.8 aperture on the uh, lens uh, to try and get as much background blur as possible. The other problem we've got Oh, is lighting. Lighting is going to be an absolute nightmare today because the, the thing about having lights, having studio lights like I've got set up here, is they're continuous. But if I put another light on, so I've got an up lighter over there, I've got lights in, in, in the ceiling, and they're just normal lights, they're yellow. They're, um, if, if I put those on, all of a sudden I would have yellow light in my scene, which I don't necessarily want. So I can't have any of my normal lights on in order to do this because I need to be completely lit by studio light. I can put them on just to work with, but when I actually want to take the picture, I need to turn those off. And I have to remember to do that, otherwise I'm going to get yellow casts all over the thing. That's not what I want at all. Um, the other problem that you've got with, with studio lighting is that it's not sunlight. It doesn't work in the same way as sunlight. You've got a panel, you've got an LED panel, and it's going to push light in one direction. Now you can diffuse it, you can uh, take something and put it in front of it to, to make the light scatter out a little bit, which looks a little bit more like the way that sunlight is reacting with the world. But it's not always perfect. And this is what the big thing that we're going to have to deal with at the moment is that, that we're, we don't want to have completely harsh light uh, on the subject. And I tell you what, I'm going to set up something now so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. OK, so I've set up this scene so that you can see what I'm talking about. Currently, I've got the main light pointing straight at the flower. And if you can see where that is, it's just off to one side over here. And that's on full. Well, in fact, it's not on full, it's on half. Um, so we're going to take a look at what that, that looks like. Uh, now, because this, has got a, this is sort of auto uh, setting for me, I can push this all the way up. Um, and yet the, the, you, you won't see too much of, of, of a dif distant difference uh, here. But you can see what we've got on the light at the moment is a really, really harsh uh, light. Um, now, what I've got over here is a reflector, one of those circular reflectors that I'm sure that you've all got at one point, you know, included in some sort of kit. Um, well, I'm going to undo this reflector, big silver thing, and I'm going to take the light that we've got here, and I'm going to turn it around this way and almost blind myself. The reason to do that, let's go back over to the, the, the plant. You can see that all the light has gone off that plant. But what we're going to do is just hold up the circular reflector in front of that and see if there's any sort of change in the way that that lighting works. And actually, you can, depending on where you hold the reflector, I'm holding it up at the moment, you can see that there is some change as I, as, as I move the thing around, but you're still getting a very harshly reflected light. So what you might want to do instead is diffuse it. And inside these circular reflectors is a lot of diffusion material. So I'm going to take our light and point it back at, uh, at the, uh, uh, the flower. And I'm going to take our diffusion material we've got here, and I'm going to put it in front of the light. And we want to see if that is making any difference. Now, if you look at the background here, I bring this on, you can see that it's really flattening out the light there. So that's kind of working for us. But it's still very, very dark. Very dark, sorry, very bright. So what I might want to do there is actually turn down the light a little bit because you want to get the shadows as well. You don't, you don't just want it completely flat. So there it is with just the light on, with just the panel on. And I should point out that the LED does actually have a little bit of diffusion on it, not very much and not very good, but a little bit of diffusion on it. So we bring this back in like we were doing before, and it, it should just even out that light just a little bit. Um, so we've got a, a nice uh, kind of look to the thing. And what I'm also going to do, and this is a little trick I learned, is just turn this light off center a little bit. So we're not pointing it straight out there. And what this is doing is around, in fact, you can see it 
even if I take this away, um, if I point it back to where it was and take it away again, what you're actually seeing there is a little bit more modeling coming in to the shadows around here. And that is what we're going to be, uh, that's what we want, really. But that's not the only light that I want. Now, I've got currently, I've got a light that's on over, you can see it over, over here. Uh, and I did that originally to light the first shot up um, and nothing else. What I want to do is to bring some of that light onto the ridge around here, or at least some light onto the ridge around here. So that's the next thing uh, that we'll be setting up. OK, so just to show you, this is what that final setup looks like. I've got the diffuser in front of the light. I've got the light uh, just slightly angled towards the back, and that's giving us the right look. If I come around here on the front um, uh, of this flower. But I wanted you to notice something actually which is kind of important, uh, that if we go back here, what you can actually see on this flower around here is you can see some of the light coming through it. And that's what I wanted to get. When I say I want to have some light on, on the back of that flower, that's kind of the effect that I want to get. And I need to get it around here, which means that I need a brighter light shining in through this way that's going to pick that up. And that's what I need to set up next. OK, so this is the final setup that we've got here. Now, I've got this one light uh, which is on completely full, and that's pointing at the back of uh, these flowers here. And that's actually our key light for this scene. That is the light that's bringing the most light into the scene. The other light that we've set up, the one that's behind the diffuser, I've actually turned uh, down a little bit. So that's, if you can see the back of this here, uh, you can actually see that that dials a little bit further down. Um, th that was nearly full when we started. And what that's doing is it's giving a fairly nice look to this. And you can probably see it a little bit better uh, in the back of the camera. There's uh, the shot in the back of the camera, just as it uh, goes dark. There we go. Um, so what we've got here as a shot, uh, fairly nice framing. There's nothing too uh, difficult about it. Now, I've manually focused this um, using the peaking on here so that these uh, little bits, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. So these little bits in the center here, and I should turn that off autofocus because I don't want it on autofocus, are actually right in focus. I don't know if you can see on the video what we're doing. I've put a two second timer on there as well, uh, because I, I want everything to be steady. And then I'm going to take the shot there. And there we have it. We've got our very first shot. Now, that's not the only thing that I wanted to do here, because what I wanted to do was actually take a focus bracket like we were doing uh, in the other video so we can get we can get a stack. Um, and like I was saying in the previous video, we've got to worry about focus breathing a little bit. But because this isn't too bad in terms of, uh, of photos, we will probably be all right. But there we have it, a lit flower, uh, which I think looks quite nice. Uh, and I'm pretty, pretty pleased with that as a shot. Uh, so I'm going to set up this focus bracket uh, and then take that shot as well. And then the next time you'll see that picture is what I managed to get when I've put it into Photoshop and everything. And we've done all my stuff with it. Here is the first flower. I actually had some problems stacking this. Once the process was complete, a lot of the image was blurred, so I had to do a lot of work in post to bring the texture back into the shot. Nevertheless, I think it's turned out really well, and I was really pleased with the uh, the look of the lighting. Certainly the glow that you get from the backlighting was exactly what I was looking for with this shot. Now I should point out that I took 80 photos here because I'd not reset my focus bracketing since the last time that we made a focus bracketing video. That was actually far too many shots, but it did give me the range that I needed for each shot. And for this image, I took about 40 shots from that stack, and I was able to blend those together without having to do the full lot. Overall, I think this has turned out really well, and I'm very, very pleased with it. The other thing I like about this is that the actual the plant itself is kind of a kind of triffid shape. And so what I've done is I've turned it on its side. And we're going to take another shot, same specs as before, same lighting setup and everything. Only this time, it's uh, going to look a little bit like this. OK, and as you can see on this particular shape, it's, uh, it's a, a, an awful lot more alien 
than we, we have on, on the previous one. Uh, so I'm going to take a, a photo of that now, and we'll see what that looks like uh, when we actually get to do it. Again, I'm going to do this as a bracketed shot. Now, I didn't run over the settings that I was using in the last video. I've got to be a bit careful because I'm uh, not uh, uh, not doing... Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff around here. I don't want to trip over it. Um, OK, so I'm on a 60th of a second, and that's because uh, constant lighting isn't always as bright as studio lighting. Uh, f2.8, because this lens shines at 2.8, really is a fantastic lens, and an ISO of 250, so a little higher than the, the kind of the base level of the camera, uh, but it is something uh, that will work, that will give us the kind of shot that we want. I'm all set up in here. I've got what I think is a fairly good frame. I've got the, both of the, the trumpets of the thing in shot, uh, and I've still got my two second timer on, so I'll release that now. And what I want to make sure is that the last shot on this, you can see all of the greenery very uh, properly. And actually, I think you can. By the time you've got kind of 80 shots, you don't need 80 shots to do all of this with. Uh, but I'm running on 80 shots because that's just what I had set up in the camera. Um, OK, that's, uh, that's it. The final thing I'm going to do is actually bring in some of this fantastic ability to do macro with the lens as well. I'm going to do a real close up of the uh, flower itself. What I love here is how sharp the flower looks, like some strange winged flying creature. In fact, when I brought this home, we started calling it the Triffid because it had something of an otherworldly shape to it. As it turns out, this was the last day that I could have got this shot. The following morning, the bud had opened and the full flower was visible. So I got this just at the right time and I'm very, very pleased we did. The stacking for this took one image for every five frames, and I ended up with five images to stack together, and that was all that was needed for this particular shot uh, to get the look that I, I wanted from it. You might notice that it's not entirely sharp towards the back of the plant. Well, that was actually done on purpose. See, you can take a full stack of focus brackets and just not use them all. And that allows you to get the bits that you want sharp. In fact, it's the only way to have proper, full control of the sharpness of your image inside the computer. So I've used that here to give a little bit of the plant a blur what's making the most important elements sharp. And I think it's turned out pretty well. I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. OK, so this time we are just taking part of the very, very middle part of the, of the flower. And again, I've got it on that bracket so that we want everything in this to be sharp. Now, in this shot, we are going to suffer from focus breathing more than we are from any other shot that we've taken today. So this is going to be a difficult one to get right when we actually put it back into the camera. Let me show you what I've got here. OK, so that's the actual shot we've got. And as you can see, it's really close on this first frond here. Uh, but as we take the photo, we'll see all of that come into focus. And again, I've changed the lighting setup a little bit for this. I've just brought this one light that was on, on the side, just round a little bit, so it lights up the trumpet a little bit more. But other than that, we've got all of the same settings as we had before. And I'm going to go with this and see what it looks like. Now, I can already see uh, the photos as they were taken. I was just watching the, 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 the thing there. And that looks to be about right. I think we've got all of the texture and everything that we wanted to get in there. So that's really cool. Uh, that is it for taking the photos. Uh, the next thing that you will see are the final photos, the final images. And that's probably it for this video. But next week, <clears throat> in the next video, uh, what I'll try and do is show you how I'm editing these, if I'm doing anything different, if there's anything that I think that you might need to know that you, I think you might be interested in seeing, then I'll show you that in that video. Until then, thanks for watching. But let's take a look at what we've got out of today. And here's the final image. Again, I took one image for every five frames taken with this. And whilst we needed more images for this focus effect, it did help to lessen the drain on my processor. Now that I've seen this, I'm not entirely happy with it. I think some of the framing is a little off and I might re-edit it later. On the whole, however, it was an image that I wanted to get. And that's the benefit of having a lens like the 80mm, which allows you to get really tight into some of the smaller elements. Now, if I'd wanted to go even smaller on this, I would have needed perhaps extension tubes because there is a 25 centimeter minimum focusing distance with this lens. It's definitely something that I'm going to be playing with in the future, especially since I'm stuck in the house for this foreseeable future. 
Now, I might be able to go out a little bit more in March. We'll see how things go. Also, I'm going to have to drop these videos down to about two a week at the moment, and I really hope you don't mind. Things hopefully will be a bit easier when we can go out again. Anyway, that's it for this video. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of the other videos that I'm making at the moment, then please do hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell icon and the all notifications tab as well. Also, don't forget to comment and like. And until next time, always remember, keep taking those photos.